focus has always been on exterior design of things around me. Um, but in 1999, I had an aneurysm. And it left me with some brain trauma and some handicaps that I had to learn to undergo. And when that happened, I went on a search for how to heal some of those areas that were injured. And I wanted to learn more about interior design. And during my search for information on how the brain functions, I ran across one of my favorite books. It's called My Stroke of Insight by Dr. Jill Bolte Taylor, who is a brain scientist who also suffered a stroke. So I could really relate to some of the things she was saying in her book. Our brain is made up of a left and a right hemisphere. And as you can see, they are very different from each other, just like night and day. Each serves a very distinctive purpose, contributing to our personality traits that make us very unique individuals. Um, the left hemisphere will tell us one thing, and the right hemisphere feels another. The left is preoccupied with details, and it runs a really tight ship. Um, our government can use a few things from the left hemisphere. Um, it's our serious side. It makes decisions based on our past experiences, and it makes assumptions from those experiences about our future. It judges everything. People, places, thoughts, actions, experiences, it will judge them as good or bad, right or wrong, and it has a file thousands and billions of files for every tidbit of information and details that it can find. The right hemisphere only cares about the present moment. Nothing to it is right or wrong. It just is what it is. It observes totally without any judgment, and it sees everyone and everything as perfect in their own unique way. And when you think about it, that's why God didn't create you like me, because then there would only be a need for one of us, and I don't want to go anywhere. Um, the left mind is the tool to communicate with the external world. It speaks to us in languages and mathematics, where the right uses pictures and feelings. And it's through this brain chatter that we have, that we stay informed about our life. And this chatter doesn't miss a thing. It's like the office, the office gossiper, the one that knows everything about everyone that's going on in the office in the world. It brings back every scrap of information that it can, and it helps you file that away. It's better than any computer at organizing this information. In a nanosecond, it can categorize, analyze, organize, describe, and judge everything. And even while talking to another, or while listening to me up here, your left hemisphere is busy multitasking to help shape your identity with the information you're hearing or seeing. Um, and it does this for you to make sense out of your world. And even if it has only a minimal amount of information, it can fill in the gaps because it knows how to weave stories. And it is really, really good at making stuff up because its job is to get your entire brain and your physical body to believe these stories. Um, it fills in the gaps because it wants to get you hooked into the emotional circuits that it can play over and over and over. And it can play over and over and over an existing array of what if possibilities. What if she says no when I ask her out? What if they fire me if I present this? What if they don't want to buy this product from me? We all have a huge list of what ifs that run through our brain continuously. And the reality is we usually do have large gaps in what we know versus what we think we know. We all know somebody that no matter what you mention, they're the expert on it. They're really good at filling in those gaps. 
So we need to be aware of its potential for stirring drama and trauma by playing and replaying these redundant stories over and over and over and over. And if you ask yourself, why does my brain do this? Well, because our bodies can become addicted to the chemical that is triggered by our emotional responses. We have a physical reaction that takes place within our bodies. When we become angry, for instance, our physical bodies literally respond with our chest feeling tight, our hearts beat fast, our hearts beat faster, our breathing becomes harder and more labored, our blood, blood pressure rises, our muscles tighten, right? The jaw clenches, and we get forced of all that ugly little crease right here between the brows. But within 90 seconds, from the onset of that triggered emotion that you're, respond, you're physically responding to, the chemical release that created that psychological, physiological experience is completely flushed out of your bloodstream. Just 90 seconds. And what that means is you don't have to think these thoughts that brought you pain and sadness and anger. And when you think about it, that's why our mothers told us, count to 10 before you react. Slowly, though, because it's 90 seconds, but, you know, our moms had it right. And if you remain angry, it's because you have chosen to let that circuitry continue to run. And those chemicals are highly addictive. Have you ever known someone that is still hung up on something that happened years and years ago? And I know every husband here realizes his wife can bring up anything that happened years in the past with great detail because her storyteller won't let her let it go. It's a chemical reaction that we're not even aware that we suffer with. And don't, what I'm saying is don't become a victim of it. We choose moment by moment our responses. And the more you pay attention to what's going on inside of you, the more control you have over how to respond to these things. Um, one of my favorite sayings is from the Course in Miracles, it's do you want to be right or do you want peace? And I love this because sometimes I need that <coughs> reminder to just clamp it up and let it be what it is. Now, 99.999% of the cells in your brain want you to be happy and healthy and successful. But there are just a tiny portion of cells in our verbal mind that are not pro-you. And some people call it the ego, but whatever you go by it, they're not pro-you. Part of our storyteller does not want to partake in your joy. The good news is, this group of cells is only about the size of a peanut. Now, the bad news is, it has control over most of your thinking mind. It runs constant loops of doom and gloom. These cells tap into our negative attributes of jealousy, fear, rage, anger, and they thrive when they're whining and complaining and ga gossiping about everyone, about how awful everything is. It sets you up to fail by sticking you up on a pedestal only to compare you to the best of the best. So no matter what, you're never going to be good enough. We've all been there, right? Um, it's our own built-in verbal abuser. And we wouldn't take it from anybody else, but we take it from ourselves. Thy shall not kill, but we kill our own spirits all the time. And we need to start paying attention to your self-talk that takes place in here and ask yourself, who's running the show anyway? When you berate yourself, have you ever stopped to ask, who inside of you is doing the yelling? And at whom are you yelling? It doesn't come from out there. 
we need to learn to push the pause buttons of our thoughts. We need to speak louder than it yells at us. We need to say, cancel, enough already, stop, time's up, knock it off, Satan, get behind me, whatever works for you to stop that chatter. Our free will is how we choose to respond to any given person or situation. You are the only one, the only one in control of your success or failure, your anger or your happiness. Others' influences are just the wind and the waves. You are the ship. And the question you have to ask yourself is who do you want to be your captain, the spirit or the ego? because one will take you to shore safely. Um, it's not our job to seek money, love, success, etc. It's our job to search our minds to those thoughts that block us from those things, because so often we've already been given them. We've just repeatedly blocked or sabotaged or blown them. God wants us to have the best of everything, but sometimes what goes on in here keeps us from having them. That's why those that win the lottery soon run out of money, because they never got rid of those blocks. They've never removed them and learned how to financially be responsible. Even your jealousy of another having health, wealth, love, etc., while you don't, will keep you from receiving those things. We know that God is love, right? But that means that love is God. So if you can love and rejoice in the successes of another of your brothers and sisters, even if you're in the midst of your own personal muck, then you're blocking the pathway to your own success. Because our loving one another is our experience of the God who blesses us with everything we desire. And we choose, we sabotage it by blocking that. Have you ever noticed that when you're having a really bad day, everything seems to go wrong? And when you're having a really good one, everything just seems to fall into place without any effort at all? Your thoughts and words manifest into the physical. And that's why your attitude, that positive attitude when you're sick or ill, is so important. And the power of prayer, even when you can't pray for yourself, is even more important. Welcome the love and support and help from others, because there is tremendous power in numbers. You know, wherever two or more are gathered, one drop of water can't do a whole lot, but we've all seen the results of Japan on the tsunami when more than one drop of water gets together. Now, if you are wondering if you are dominant on your left side or your right side, watch this little following video as I talk. And the question is, do you see the dancer spinning clockwise or counterclockwise? Because clockwise means you are right now, you're looking at her with your right mind. Left counterclockwise means you are using your left. And if all you see is boots and butt, then I ask you to go see your pastor. <laughs> um, you can keep your personal power in the world, yet not lose your sense of compassion and equality among people. You can learn to engage with your family and friends without getting sucked into the drama or gossip. This means you have to change your mind over and over and over by relearning everything you think you already know. You have to quiet that little voice of the storyteller and you have to learn to be in touch with the physical components of emotion and what they do to you on a physical level. To your body. Focus on the abilities in your life, not your disabilities. When I lost the sight in my left eye, I lost all depth perception. But in return, 
my brain rewired and I gained a deeper her insight. I lost sight, but I gained insight. Our brains have that ability to change its connections based on incoming stimulation. It's like one of the houses I've decorated. All the wiring is there, but the homeowner is still going to be in the dark until they plug in a light and flip the switch. Nothing, nothing, nothing external of you has the power to take away your peace of heart and mind. You may not be completely in control of what happens in your life, but you are in total charge of how you perceive and respond to it. You have to work with your interior design and find a balanced brain approach to life. The more we learn about which side of our brain is doing most of our processing, the more we have control of our actions because there are things that we could learn to do to balance the way we work. Not just as an individual, but as a group of human beings living together on this planet. Um, science says we only use about 10% of our brain cells. And that fascinates me, because if you can just close your eyes and imagine for a moment the possibilities that this means for this planet as well as you, if we just pay attention to the interior design of how it all comes together. Thank you.